All right, class, welcome back. This is going to be our factoring video on sum of cubes and difference of cubes. So uh, a couple of things, again, this is the instructions for these questions. We'll say factor completely. And our process for doing that will be, first, we'll factor out a GCF if there is one. Second, we'll count the number of terms to determine which method we're gonna use. And then third, we will check for nesting. We haven't really talked about nesting yet, but we will. Okay, and uh, so first we need to talk about what is a perfect cube? Well, a perfect cube is any one of these numbers. It's any number that would be multiplied by the same thing or broke down to a factor. Factors, the same factors multiplied together three times. So one times one times one is one. Two times two times two is eight. Three times three times three is 27 and so on. So I've listed uh, up until seven here. And then also want to mention that any variable exponent that is a multiple of three. So any variable exponent, so we're talking about the variables. We, these constants right here, all of these are perfect cubes. These numbers right here are the perfect cube. The cube or the root would be seven. So the cube root of 343 is seven. The cube root of 216 is six. Okay, so the actual cube here are these numbers in this column. And in variables, any variable exponent that is a multiple of three. So if I have uh, y to the sixth or z to the twelfth, since these are multiples of three, these are also perfect cubes. Okay, so if we have a perfect cube, whether we have a sum or a difference, perfect cubes by definition have a cube, so x cubed, we've determined that's a perfect cube, and eight is a perfect cube. So this would be defined as a sum of cubes. This one here would be defined as a difference of cubes because 27 is a perfect cube with the root being three, y cubed is the perfect cube, and 64 is also a perfect cube with the root being four. This is a difference. So the only difference between a sum and a difference of cubes is the sign. And how do these factor? Um, there are other ways to do this through uh, synthetic division or long division or figuring, figuring this out, but what you need to do here is memorize. I know uh, we hate memorizing things, but uh, what we need to do is memorize our um, <clears throat> equation or formula to factor these. So a sum of cubes, the way I remember this is I'm gonna have a binomial and a trinomial. So this is what it factors to. There's gonna be an A and a B, and A and a B, and an A and a B, okay? So A and B in the front of this one, A and B in the front and back of this one, A and B in the middle. This, however, the second one, the second parenthesis will have squared here and squared here, okay? So this will be a B squared. And then the signs go like this. They're the same, opposite, always positive. What the heck am I talking about? Same, opposite, always positive. Well, this has a positive sign right here. So this is gonna be the same sign. Same, opposite, always positive. Okay, so the acronym for this is SOAP. So when we're doing sum and difference of cubes, we want to remember SOAP. Okay, that means that my difference of cubes is gonna factor exactly the same. I'm gonna have, let's do this one more time, I'm gonna have an A in front, a B in back. An A in front, a B in back, and an AB together in the middle. Okay, and then the signs are gonna be the same, opposite, always positive. Okay, this sign is negative, so this sign is gonna be the same. Opposite, always positive, soap. Okay, so that is our formula for difference of cubes. So as you can see, what's most important here then is you need to be able to find the root. If I'm looking at a cube, then I need to say, well, what is the root of that? So what I wanna do here is label the root of x cubed, and I'm gonna say that a, or my value for a, is gonna be x because it is just x. 
or in other words, this is x times x times x. Okay, and this is gonna be my b value. The b value is gonna be two because eight is two times two times two. So now that I've identified what a is and I've identified what b is, I literally am just gonna plug it in into the a, b, a, b, a, b. This is a positive, so it's gonna be sum, positive, negative, always positive. Okay, so a in this case is gonna be x, or the value of x is the root of the cube. I'm going to add the root of eight, which is two. That's what's in my first parenthesis here. Uh, we also need to put our squares on here. Don't ever forget those, these are squares. The second parenthesis is squared, so the second has twos on it, on the ends. Okay, so what is a squared? Well, if x is the root, x times x is x squared. Okay, and if two is the root, two times two is four. Okay, well what is a b? Well, a b is two times x, which is two x, so that's gonna be a minus two x. So this sum of cubes is now factored completely right here. Okay, so this just takes practice. Again, this is purely rote memorization. You have to memorize this formula. It's exactly the same for both sum and difference of cubes. It's just the signs that you have to remember for, for that. And it's always just gonna be same, opposite, always positive. So we'll do this one more time just to kind of get it into our, our minds. So I have to check this to see if it is a perfect cube. 27 is, and the root is three. The root of y cubed is y, and the root of 64 is four. These are gonna be the a and the b value in this generic uh, formula or form. Okay, so then I'm going to say, well, if, again, three y times three y times three y is 27 y cubed. That is the definition of a perfect cube. Four times four times four is 64. Again, definition of a perfect cube. So I'm gonna use my formula, a, b, a, b, a, b. The second one is squared. Same sign, opposite sign, always positive. So now I'm gonna actually plug these values in. We'll do a three y, because that's the a value, minus a b, which is a four. Three y squared, three y, times three y, what is that? That is nine y squared, nine y squared, plus an a times b, four times three is 12 y, plus a b squared, which is just gonna be four times four, which is 16. Okay, this is the factorization of this difference of cubes. These are actually really fun, and once you uh, learn to recognize the sum and difference of cube, uh, you can easily see uh, what they break down to. Uh, it's just, again, memorizing the where the A's and the B's go and then figuring out what A and B is. So let's do a couple more of these that maybe have additional steps. For instance, like we might need to factor out a GCF or maybe we will need to um, check for nesting. Uh, we haven't talked about nesting too much, but let's talk about when we need to check for nesting. We need to check for nesting if this was bigger than a cube. Okay, so uh, let's just do, write a couple more problems on here. I'll just write one at a time so we have a little more space. Okay. Um, so let's do... 128 minus 2y to the sixth. Actually, let's not do that. Let's do, oh my gosh, sorry, I keep moving this. Let's do, uh, let's do 2. W to the sixth 
minus 250. Okay, so my first step here, always and forever, always and forever, is to factor out a GCF. So I'm going to look and say, do I have a GCF here between 2 and 250? Well, they're both even, so I know I can take out a 2. So I can factor out a 2, and I'm going to get W to the 6th minus 125. Now the question is, is W to the 6th a perfect cube? Uh, it is a multiple. This exponent 6 is a multiple of 3. 3, 6, 9, 12. So uh, what is the root? Well, w squared times w squared times w squared is w to the sixth. So the root here is w squared. Is 125 a perfect cube? Why, yes it is, and I highly recommend memorizing all of these things I wrote over here. Just have these numbers under your hat. It'll make your life so much easier. The root of 125 the cubed root of 125 is 5. So now I know the a value and the b value. It's important to note that when I'm using the a and b, I don't include or worry about this GCF. Right now I'm just going to pretend like it doesn't exist, but I know that it's going to come down into my answer. So I can't forget it, but I'm going to ignore it for a little minute. Okay, uh, so now I'm going to say a, which is w squared. Let's just rewrite this one more time, just the generic. A, B, A, B, A, B. Okay, the second ones are squared. The signs are gonna be the same, opposite, always positive. Okay, so I'm gonna replace A with W squared, B with five. Uh, A squared is gonna be W squared, and W squared is W to the fourth. Five times W squared, is 5w squared, and 5 times 5 is 25. Now I need to bring the 2 down, and uh, right now I need to check for nesting, and the reason why is that inside of this parenthesis is a squared, okay? So I could break this w down again. Maybe I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this might be a difference of squares, but 5 doesn't factor at all. It just factors to 1 and 5, so this isn't a difference of squares. By the way, this is not a perfect square trinomial. Let me repeat this. This is not a perfect square trinomial. Remember that perfect square trinomials are a squared plus 2ab plus b squared or a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. These Second, trinomials here are not perfect square trinomials, and as such, they can't factor further. Okay, so I checked. I checked for nesting, and it's not possible. So uh, then my final answer here will be all of this. All of these are the factors uh, factored completely for this difference of cubes. Okay, let's do uh, one more. Let's do, um, let's do P to the fourth. Now let's do P to the seventh minus 81p. Okay, so um, here we go. 3p to the seventh minus 81p. All right, let's do a plus this time. Last time we did a minus. Good thing I'm making this up as we go. All right, so here is my problem. First thing, first and always, that I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a GCF. So I'm going to look and say that 3 and 81 have a common factor of 3. And there's a P here on both of those, so I'm going to pull out the P. When I do that, if I divide 
3p to the 7th by 3p, then I just get p to the 6th. If I divide 81p by 3p, then I'm going to get 27. I feel like I should have been like C3PO or something weird. Okay, now I'm going to check, because this is a two-term polynomial, I need to see if this is a sum of cubes, difference of cubes, sum of squares, or difference of squares. Those are the four things we know how to factor. So right here, this is a multiple of six, but it's also a perfect square. So this could be a sum of squares. But this 27 is not a perfect square. It's a perfect cube with the root being 3. And this is a perfect cube with the root being p squared. So now that I know that, I'm going to pull out my nifty formula and say this is a sum. So I'm going to use this formula here, the sum of cubes. And I'm going to say uh, bring down that 3p because it's part of the factoring. a is p squared plus b, which is 3 times a squared, which is going to be p to the fourth, minus ab, which is 3p squared, plus b squared, which is going to be 9. Again, this, this won't uh, factor any further. We can't factor, like the only factors of 9 are 1 and 9 and 3 and 3, and those won't never sum to this negative 3. Uh, inside of here, I need to check for that nesting as well. This is a perfect square, but this is a sum of squares, so this wouldn't be factorable even if this was a perfect square. So say like this was a 4 here, I still couldn't factor this further. Okay, so I checked for that nesting, and this is factored completely. We'll see you all in class.